Nothing, the electronics company whose name perfectly describes its main products, the Nothing Phones. The first phone, aka Phone 1, came out in 2021 with a special quirk of supposedly letting you peek at the components of the phone and getting your notifications through this innovative glyph interface. Then came Phone 2 in 2023 and so on. Being an aesthetics enjoyer myself, I was pretty impressed by their design in the beginning, so a few months ago, I got myself a Nothing Phone 2. And it's been a... <sighs> Run. The Nothing Phone 2 runs on Android 14 with a Nothing theme. Oh, um, I mean, Nothing OS. It has a minimalist monochromatic design with its own retro font and a bunch of native widgets and applications. I admit, everything looked cool in the beginning, until I actually started using it. I didn't want to compare, but because I saw them do it a lot on social media, then why not? Even though Nothing OS is a skin of Android 14, they didn't really change much compared to One UI or Oxygen OS that completely modified the default Android 14 UI. Because of this half-assed UI, there are so many inconsistencies and things that they somehow managed to make worse compared to Android 14. Like the quick settings. On Android 14, you swipe down once and you can see four settings and no brightness. This is fixed in One UI, but nothing adds two more settings and misses the chance to add brightness here and make things easier for everyone. On Android 14, the second swipe expands everything and you can swipe through to see eight more settings at a time. On Nothing OS 2.6 though, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth boxes grow bigger for no reason at all and take one third of the screen and there are only six more settings available to you with every swipe. And where is brightness? Oh, I thought that was a slider or divider or something. Nobody should have to press on something to figure out what they are. And to put the cherry on top and compensate for the lack of nothingness, they just had to force their own font on the time and place it in the most questionable way and completely break the alignment and symmetry. I mean, even the date is a slightly lower than the battery information on the right side. You can't unsee this once you see it. You know what, I'll just let you look at this for a while. Instead of trying to make Android 14 look weird, we could have a whole new quick settings that actually uses a nothing design language and improves the layout, like bringing the brightness settings lower for easier access, or saving the space with these icons that are similar to the nothing widgets. But from what I can see in the upcoming Nothing OS 3, that's not gonna happen. And to be honest, there are a lot of similarities between the Nothing OS 3 quick settings and the Oxygen OS quick settings from OnePlus. It's almost as if the same person founded both companies. The visual inconsistency follows you everywhere. They use this dot matrix font in the titles, but they completely miss the chance to create and use their own icons in the UI. The navigation system is similar to Android 14. It allows you to choose two navigation modes. Gesture navigation, like swiping from the bottom, left, or right of the screen, or three button navigation to go back, go home, and switch apps. These icons though, if you're gonna have a UI worth calling OS, then don't do 20% nothing and 80% just pure raw Android UI. You can offer both the nothings design and the default design and allow people to choose whichever they like. Now let's start actually using the phone. First things first, I want to customize the phone for myself, starting with wallpaper. There are a couple of presets, but if I want more, first I can choose a picture. Okay, great. Second, generate an image with AI. <sighs> Brilliant. Third, choose one of Nothing's wallpapers. And fourth, choose one of these colors. Just one of these, there are no more options. One UI allows you to choose a color style and then pick any color you want from a color picker. iOS 17 allows you to do that as well. So we could have that here with a similar flow. Then I wanna choose a color for the icons. And beside the wallpaper colors, I only have a few custom options, which could again be a simple color picker. For the icons, I either gotta download an icon pack or choose default Android icons, Nothing OS icons, or colored icons. This is just a part of Android's built-in icon customization. And the Nothing OS icons don't really look that different, except they're just black and white. But this was a good opportunity for me to see how convenient monochromatic icons are when it comes to actually using them. You might think monochromatic icons make it easier to navigate because they're consistent, but they're not. We recognize apps and icons thanks to layout coding and color coding. Layout coding relies on muscle memory and visual memory, and colors distinguish between different apps. Both of these factors are important and there are studies that prove that. Without color, it took me a few seconds every time to make sure I'm clicking on the right app. So beside all these options, why not have a nothing coded pack of icons with the original colors of the app? I mean, they've done it before with other apps like ChatGPT. Now that we're done with themes and stuff, let's customize the homepage with some widgets because nothing really prides itself in these widgets. One thing that immediately bothers me about these widgets is how their style is so inconsistent. Considering the fact that these are all nothing widgets and not app widgets, these specific ones are not using the nothings style at all. The date and clock widgets look like complete misfits. I mean, is it really that 
hard to follow your own design style? As a phone that has design as its main selling point, the design is only 50% complete and the remaining 50% is just missed opportunities. And that gets much bolder when it comes to the Nothing apps. Nothing OS comes with native apps like Weather, Recorder and Composer. But no phone or messages or gallery app? So the only option is using the Google applications. Well, as a phone that promises to be free from bloatware, it sure relies a little too much on Google products for basic phone functions. I understand that a lot of people are okay using the Google Photos app, but the phone itself needs to have a gallery app that doesn't need me to sign into Google or doesn't create AI-generated memories for me. Just a simple timeline and album page where I could browse my photos would do. Wait, what's that? Oh, they're gonna release a gallery app this year. Oh, so I should be happy, even though four phones have already launched without it. And also no native messaging or calls app? Who would have thought that phones in 2024 are not gonna have their own phone apps? So what is this, a Google phone with an edge? Nothing managed to create an entire application to connect iMessage users with Android. But a native phone app as simple as this, with the Nothing design style, is too much to ask. I was gonna talk about how cool it would be to get a calculator app that fixes this weird layout of Android's calculator and gets the Nothing design style. But I guess other apps need more help for now. All the things inside the phone, not enough. So that's why there's an interface outside the phone. The Glyph interface has these tiny LEDs that light up at every call, notification, or other use cases. It has a lot of potential, but unfortunately, completely missed. Here are the use cases of the Glyph interface. Flip to Glyph to turn on do not disturb mode. Wiggle to show the charging level. A Glyph progress bar for timer or food order or volume. Music visualization. And Glyph as flashlight. Now I gotta admit, these are all very cool. But as I was looking for a way to set up Glyph patterns for different for notifications, I realized that the only way to do it is to download this app called Glyph Composer and kind of compose a tune and then record it. This is not very intuitive because first of all, there's so much back and forth just so I can set a pattern for my notification. And then every button down here doesn't correspond to only one flash of the glyph lights. Sometimes it flashes twice or three times. What if I just wanna open an app, go to notifications, go to glyph, and from there choose a pattern by clicking on the glyph symbols. And for special notifications, I think an option for modifying the color of the glyphs could also be pretty cool. Now, one thing that bugs me about the glyph is is the progress bar feature is almost useless. And even if it is useful when for some reason you turn your phone around to read the progress of an order or timer, what I can't understand is why the progress bar doesn't come with camera's countdown timer. Instead of using this opportunity to offer something truly unique for photography on phones, you get this weird flash that doesn't let you know exactly how long you have till the photo is taken. Nothing really likes slogans. First, it was removing the barrier between people and technology. So their phones came with a transparent back glass that gave you the feeling that you're looking at the internal components of the phone. So it's a minimal design that's easier to fix, right? Well, as iFixit said for Nothing Phone 1, this complex design actually makes it more difficult to repair. So all the components you see here are sacrificing everything for design. So much for minimalism, huh? Plus, most of the components visible from the outside are not actually functional, and these design choices make it even harder to disassemble. And there's not even a repair manual. For reference, both your Samsung phones and iPhones have repair manuals. Now their motto is building a world where tech is fun again. Well, I can tell you that reviewing the UI of this phone has been pretty fun. Maybe if it wasn't $6.99 for a phone with so many shortcomings, it would have been the most fun thing of all time. But I'm definitely looking forward to see some improvements. Well, that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down below and see you on the next one.